dapple grey. The old grey horse was very sad. For many years he had carried his master to market. How proud he had been to trot down the street. Gee up, dapple grey, his master would say. You are the finest horse in the land. You are so quick and so sure. I am very proud of you. Then Dapple Grey would toss his head with pride and run all the faster. Those were happy days for him. But now all that was past. He was left sad and lonely in his stable. His master now went to market in a shining motor car. Dapple Grey hated it. It made such a noise and was so proud. Poor old horse, it scoffed. Would you not like to be as fine as I am? I can run faster than you ever could. And I am new. But you are old and of no use to anybody. Dapple Grey tossed his mane. I would rather be an old horse than a noisy car. I can go where I want and when I like. But you have to wait till the master makes you go. You are jealous, said the car, blowing its horn. My master is proud of me. But he never looks at you. You are good for nothing. Dapple Grey's tail drooped. It was true that his master never came near him now. All day he was left alone in the stable. Sometimes he was let out into the field. He could see the car swooping past with his master at the wheel. The dust rose in clouds behind it, and the hens ran out of its way. Then Dapple Grey would run up and down the field all by himself. Sometimes he would pretend that his master was on his back, and that they were going to market. Gee up, Dapple Grey, he would say to himself. You are the finest horse in the land. But alas, it was all pretense. He grew tired of being left alone day after day. If this goes on, he said one day, I shall run away. Perhaps there is someone in the wide world who wants me. But he did not like to leave his master. He had been very kind to him before the motor car came. Perhaps there would come a day when he was needed again. One fine day the master polished up the car ready to go to market. Look how I shine, cried the car to Dapple Grey, who was out in the field watching. No wonder the master is proud of me. Bah, snorted Dapple Grey. He turned his tail and ran off to the far end of the field. Soon he saw his master come out of the house and get into the car. Whirr, said the car, as it got ready to start. Hoot, went the horn. Dapple Grey sighed as he watched the car speed away. He saw it flash along the road beside the field. Then all at once it gave a kind of groan and stood still. Dapple Grey ran as fast as he could and peered over the fence. His master got out of the car and touched this and that. Then he tried to start it again, but the car would not move. The old grey horse did not pretend to be sorry. In fact, he felt so glad that he gave a loud laugh. His master looked up and saw him peering over the fence. So there you are, Dapple Grey, he said in his old kind voice. The car has failed me. If I am to get to market today, I will have to take you. Dapple Grey kicked up his heels with joy. He felt young and strong and gay again. He was no longer jealous of the shining car. His master put on the harness and jumped on his back. Gee up, Dapple Grey, he said. You must hurry if we are to get to the market in time. 
The old horse trotted down the road as fast as he could. He tossed his head proudly when he passed the car. Who can run the fastest now, he said and hurried onwards. The car groaned. It tried hard to move, but something held it back. Who would have thought that the old horse could run so fast, it grunted. Dapple Grey kicked up his heels and was out of sight in no time away down the road. Good horse, said his master. You can travel almost as fast as the car can, and you never break down. Dapple Grey shook his head and felt prouder than ever. It was fine to feel that he was of use once more. And that his master felt pleased with him. You know, Dapple Grey, he said, I have been getting lazy lately. I must leave the car at home sometimes and take you to market instead. The old horse was so pleased that he ran faster than ever and soon reached the market. He was very tired when he got back home, but so happy that it did not matter at all. He knew that he was not going to be lonely any more. By Lavina de Wendt.